Welcome home and welcome back to the Water Shapers Guild. Let's see whom we find there in Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire on Insane. I don't know. Oh, Takehu. And actually, I should mention that I've uh, probably not saved this, so we might redo that for now. <laughs> ah, <laughs> Guildmaster in fine robes stares down the sizable blue skinned Aumawa before her. He tosses his anemone like hair, which glows faintly as each bulbous strand settles in place. I skipped one lecture to travel up the mountain. Still, the palace is closed until you present me before Onikaza. He crosses his arms and raises one eyebrow. The murmurs of the crowd grow in volume. You come alone. I ask for patience, but as usual, you make a trench out of a tide pool. She pacifies her tone, suddenly conscious of the onlookers. Um. Well, this sounds important or controversial, or both. Takira, it's always both where this one is concerned. He nods toward Takehu. So he's uh, a reasonable thinker, I guess. The one who stands out from the crowd. My patience wears thin, old shark. You have stifled me enough for one trip through Rikuhu's bowels. Rikuhu is, oh, the death god. The Death God, the Twin Eel God. Oh my God! In Huana folklore, Kohopa and Tangaloa were born before time existed, and each had an insatiable appetite. That's the the Twin Eels, and each yeah, they begin to devour all living things, and with each thing devoured, they become larger. When there were no living things left to eat, and the two eels were so enormous as to encompass all existence, they begin to devour one another. Thus, all beings are perpetually passing through the digestive tracts of the two eels. When one reaches the end, it passes through the mouth of the next eel, the gateway to or from the underworld, and the next stage of existence begins. The notion of time is merely one's perception of the digestive process. Ah, I wish you a good appetite with whatever you're eating at the moment. In spite of their obvious age difference, Takehu raises an instructive finger to the guildmaster. She flares her nostrils and takes a deep breath. Aha. Uh -huh. He's a child of Ngati, so he's a half god? Wow. Um, I'm not sure that I ever thought of myself as the son of the god. He waves toward the guildmaster with the back of his hand. Hey, I mean, he has to explore the, the moistness, I don't know. The guildmaster sidesteps Takehu and takes long strides away from the circle. Sparing another glance at Takehu, the crowd disperses. Takehu sighs and smooths back his hair. He turns his attention to you with a raised brow. Hey, let's not get ahead of ourselves. The guy who thumbs his chin and nods at you. Um, that's... He seems like a fun guy to have around. The water shipping sounds like a prestigious talent. connection to the gods, the Hawana mold water like it is clay, easing it into an assumed form. And that's... That's odd, right? I mean, molding water like it is clay, that would be harder than it is normally. Uh, grinning, the Kuhu adjusts his posture to assume a flowing, almost weightless stance. We sink every ship in Rawatai's fleet if they drew too close to the city. But some of us have gentler tastes. He sighs and stands once more at ease. Some of us see water shaping for what it is. A gift of divine expression. So you're an artist is what I would want to ask. Uh... I take it you and the guildmaster don't get along. Art, yes. Barbarians, I guess. What I am is to blame, I say. Yeah, you are, I, I don't know, an excellent water shaper? What is that? Oh, that's from the... Hmm, that's our background knowledge. We should follow the roleplay and, and choose that probably then. And Gatti's chosen, as it doesn't contradict our personality. The locals revere anything to do with the sea. 
Not that we take Ngati seriously, but... Water shaping is Ngati's gift to the Huana, and apparently I am too. Savior to the tribes. <laughs> he folds his arms and grimaces. Well, um, you should care for the tribes. They need help, you know. But, uh, okay. Um. Well, uh, sounds like they put a lot of pressure on you. No, we won't say that. Come on. Uh, push back a little. Test your boundaries, man. The only question is, do I return to my duties or while away a few hours in the bathhouse? Yeah, the do away with some uh, pressure, right? Takehu tucks on his hair and purses his lips. Um, well, the bathhouse, come on, we, we will not tell him that. That's too rational. Yeah, we're joking around with this guy. The bathhouse, definitely the bathhouse. His grin widens even further as he appraises you. Ah, uh, just no, Takehu. We were just joking around. What a terrifying pair we would make. Sighing to himself, Takehu scans you up and down. He casually clears his throat and glances away. Ah. Uh, Uh, we'll just say nothing to that. Well, I could use a rowdy fish like you and the Defiant if you will have a Watcher at the helm. Watcher? And here I am, used to being the freak of Pariki's overlook. He rests a hand on his hip and grins. What does a Watcher do? Well, um, I watch mostly the dead. No, um... I am an intermediary between here and the in-between. No, I commune with the spirits of the... That's what we do most. Just so. He strokes his chin, nodding. I say I am no sailor, and I know even less about death. I am an artist. He stirs his fingers through the air, drawing together droplets of moisture into an orb of water that floats over his palm. My peers do not understand. Water shaping to them is like studying calligraphy. To brew ink and sort parchment. He lets the orb fall to the ground and splash at his feet. Um, we're tolerant of like everyone. I have nothing against a sensitive artist. He claps your shoulder and grins. Not unknown to me, I say. Whispers of an Audra Colossus reach my ears. I said we'll not use him, but we'll we want him on the crew, so to say. He want him as a. Uh, somehow, someone we can com communicate with, ask him, and, s and something like that. Now just imagine building an army to louder whispers of a corpse who follows him. To Kehu raises one of his brows. What will you do when you catch up to this walking god? Um, offer a few compliments, buy him a drink, so see where it goes from here? No. Uh, actually, he needs to answer for his actions. We uh, we don't think he's a god or something. As do many mortals in the dead fire. It seems the gods are not different. If it untangles me from the guild's apron strings, then you can mount me as the figurehead of your fair ship. Yeah, that would be fine. Take who inclines his head and touches the circular marking on his brow. Waters may smell a fish before long, but your crew will be more beautiful by association, I say. He winks. Well, let's be honest. It will be good to put some distance between myself and the guild, even if we find less savory places along the way. A fair warning, Captain. Ingati gifted her favorite son with more than his stunning complexion. The guild tosses his hair and sighs contentedly. Ah, uh, oh God, are you hiding an anglerfish lure under that rope? Good for you, I'm happy you're so special. <laughs> What can you breathe underwater? Yes, only for as long as well. The gale folds his arms and considers. I say you will learn. In time. He winks, his eyes suddenly as dark as beads of polished onyx. My god. What will we make him? <sighs> Let's go for a druid. And we'll just add him to the roster. Let's see. Now, let's explore the Watershippers Guild, shall we? What's this? 
Pitied Isengarty, Lady of Lament, as the pearl orb of the heavens crosses her view. Her eyes well with tears as constant as rain. The moon's skyward journey continues apace. The lover's affection as ephemeral as fingers touching. I love all kinds of poems. Like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a law admirer. I have become that. And when read all the books in Skyrim, I heard there were some. There's who is who is that? Seems like someone important from from the looks. No, I mean we allow ourselves that little cheat, so to say, and do not talk to all of these neophytes. But this guy here, or girl. A young Huana holds out his hands. As if to catch an incoming missile, he winces in concentration and an orb of water rises and floats midair. Sweat drips down his nose. He's learning. He flinches and in that instant the water loses all shape and splashes on the floor. Crestfallen, he sighs and drops his stance. He nods to you and shakes out his arms, readying himself for another try. You seem to be having trouble. I can feel the connection to Andre just like Myru taught me. He frowns himself. Your form. Um, oh, I don't know. We could lie to him. Remember to hold your breath and keep your knees together. What? No. No. Uh, that, that would be... Come on, no. Sorry, I have no idea. He shrugs. Well, farewell. Yeah, persistence. Persistence will help you. Maybe we'll find something that, that helps him. It looks beautiful here. I like these blue vases. At the... I just like the look of this place. What's here? There are some books here. Oh, there's a chest. We love chests. What's in there? A water shaper's robe. <sighs> Exceptional robe. We could steal it, but... Uh, hmm. There's no one looking and no one seems to need these things. Uh, whoops. Whoopsie do. Yeah, they are they're very they have a lot of money. I mean look at these floors. These floors alone would cost uh, the lifetime income of a of a commoner. So it's okay if we take that robe. It's absolutely okay. This is a new situation for us. We were never so so bereaved of everything. <sighs> With that, looks important. Good master Myru. You have questions for me. Speak up, I say. Good master Myru folds her arms and nods, but we don't know that she's good master Myru. I th from the tell me about the guild. Yeah. Hariki was the first in recent memory to organize the talent into a series of teachable forms. Periki was an explorer and founder of the Water Shapers Guild. Many of the modern teachings of water shaping stem from her research into ancient Yuana society, which led to her posthumous renown and the subsequent naming of her home district in Agataka as Periki's Overlook. Oh, good. What else would you like to know? Hmm. Where do the water shapers get their power? From, from water? From Ngati? I mean, I know she's a goddess, but. Yeah, we don't really believe in that, so... Our art is the yield of the Juana's ancient covenant with the goddess. Oh, okay, so it's your priests. The luminous Adra, the islands, and the tribes. And Gati gifted us with the strength to keep our promise. So you get it from Adra? That sounds risky. What do water shapers do exactly? tides, prevent storm damage, and keep unwelcome ships at bay. Yeah, that sounds good. Lately we haven't experienced an artistic revival of sorts. Thanks to our star pupil, Takehu. Yeah, that's something individual, which is cool. We represent the best of Juana achievement. No small responsibility. Indeed, back to my other questions. But, um, so you're the leader of this. What do you do? Akira, speak freely. We'll not speak freely anymore because we have nothing to say, it seems. We have no idea what to do. We could go to the library. Maybe we can help that, that poor guy who who is not looking at the library for some reason. 
Um, what's in here? Oh, that would be stealing. What? What's there? Palm slats. I don't know. In here, there's a ripple sponge. We don't need things like that. Why do you have ripple sponge in a library? That 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 looks like a rival. Yeah, ripple sponge. Really. What's in here? Ah, oh, look at that. The four forms of water shaping. That could help this guy. And Daraku's reply. Let's find out. What follows is an initiates primer in the four forms of water shaping, which comprise the basic lessons of our guild. Grief, hope, metamorphosis, and transcendence. <clears throat> that sounds something like could be helpful in, in uh, the real life. The form of grief, acceptance. That one's physicality is not as mutable as water. That's what this guy needs, right? The apprentice. The form of hope, understanding that water is more relentless and inexorable than any natural force. The form of metamorphosis, realization that the body's internal water can help meditate, mediate the prior forms. The form of transcendence. Water covers Eora. If water can be shaped, so can the world. What do we have here? Daraku's reply. Oh, what is that? Myru. For what did you... So that's to the guildmaster. A reply to the guildmaster. For what did you send me away to meditate on the fourth form in Uncharted Waters only to summon me back to the Kahanga fleet? A bomb must have gone off in Serpent's Crown. One of revelation, if not black powder. The interruption is a setback. I trust that whatever happens next will propel our people forward. I will sail Periki's resolve into the waters where I suspect you need me most and await your orders. I hope that the rumors carried upon the waves are to be trusted. I would tell you to send on Onikaza, my love, but she knows that it is hers. Tell her that she needs only snap her fingers, and I will be her storm again. Daraku, Master Water Shipper. Nice, so well, kind of an expedition or something? Hmm. To Periki's resort. And what's that? Selected correspondences of gift bringer Aiden. Oh, that's... Yeah, we are not one to look at all the texts, right? That is a praise of Ondra. And we really don't like Ondra from our previous playthrough too. So we'll not take this with us. Maybe we can help now. Uh, that guy, now we know about the four forms. Maybe we can... We're more qualified to to help Varua. Seeing as I'm getting nowhere, I'll spare you the time. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe we should have lied to him. I don't know. What's in there? This ornate basin makes a high-pitched ringing sound when pressure is applied around the outer rim. And... Uh, I think that was all we could see here. Thank you for watching. Next time we'll go down into the guild ruins. Maybe we'll find something interesting there. Ruins is something you really like, right? Dungeons, maybe. Dragons. Whatever. Whatever expects us. We'll see. Have a great time until next time and happy gaming.